Hey, what's up fellas? Doing a video for Ken tonight. This is kind of a, an instructional and setup video. We're going to be talking about assembly, startup, operation and configuration and maintenance on this little mono tube boiler here. So let's see what we got going on. So here's a quick clip of the pilot light position. This particular torch is the only one I could get on short notice because the stores, for whatever reason, are out of stock of everything where I'm at. The only thing I don't like about this particular pilot light is that this torch will not let me turn the flame down as low as I would like to, but it works very well nonetheless. So you can see where I have the end of the torch positioned just across that um, that preheat line right there. You can see the two discharge ports for the burner and I have it positioned in between them. That's pretty much the best position for the pilot light and you want to have that pilot light turned down as low as you can get it. Um, unfortunately this one won't go as low as I would like to. Like I said I just didn't have the time to get one. I had assumed the store would have one available so I did not order one online and I was wrong. But it works nonetheless and the place you hook that up is right here on this valve body assembly where I have marked the letter P in the lower right hand corner. That is where that will connect. This has like a 10 foot hose I believe for the pilot light. And I also sent you an additional hose for the main control. Now over to the left where I have labeled this valve on is the on off valve and you want to have that in the off position as shown in this illustration or in this video clip I should say. That is where you want to have it when you go to turn everything on and you turn on the propane. We see just next to that to the right is the solenoid and then in between those two items that we discussed is the regulator. The regulator can be set up to 110 PSI's on some large propane tanks but the burner can get a little loud. If you run this at 80 or a little bit under 80 PSI's that reverberation stops and the burner is not as loud. You um, adjust the pressure by turning that that black round knob on the side of the regulator there. So with everything on I'm going to turn the valve and it will fire up. Okay, so here in the bottom right hand corner we can see the injection nozzle and I outlined the position that I had in this test with a marker. So you should just be able to bolt that propane nozzle right back into place. Just above that and right next to it you can see where the water line is connected and that's what the silver stainless steel braided hose is for. And you want to just give that thing about a half turn after you've hand tightened it. You don't want to over tighten those uh, stainless steel braided hoses too much. A half turn to three quarters of a turn is usually good enough. If you notice the burner sounds a little loud, you can rotate the propane nozzle left or right to dial in the Ventura effect of the nozzle. It will pull in enough air to make that reverberation stop. That reverberation sound you hear is due to the lack of air in the combustion chamber. It needs more air blown into it and I know this because I've done testing where I'll take an air compressor wand and blow a little extra air in there when it does that and sure enough that reverberation sound stops. A small blower will also do the same thing but at this point we're just going to run it at the power setting it's at. If you find out you need more power out of this boiler there are some things we can do. We can take a small electric blower and add air to that intake and increase the propane input and it won't be so loud. Okay. 
Okay, now, regarding the PID controller, that's this little box with the uh, temperature readout on it. That's what turns the boiler on and off. So you're gonna set that thermocouple to the upper level of your autoclave, anyway. like up on the ceiling. Fire back up. As soon as that hits 191 degrees here. Let's see what happens. This is the moment. So, how do we adjust the PID controller to get the temperatures that we want? Well, let's take a look. It's very easy to set this thing. Okay, I just turned this thing back on, so it hasn't been running very long. So we're only doing about 221 degrees right now, but when you let it run a little longer, or if you turn the water down, that's another way you can increase the steam temperature is by turning down the water flow. Down. Now, to adjust the temperature that the system triggers at, you just hit the set button here. You hold the set button. Then it goes to set value, is what that stands for. So let's say I want it to be 180 degrees. Instead of 190, we just do that. And now you're set. So again, we're just gonna hold it. Set value, I'm gonna turn it back to 191 for you. And now that will trigger all this equipment. Basically we have two servos here, power supply and your PID controller. We have a solenoid here that shuts the water off, so you don't just do this right here when the system shuts off. If that solenoid over here wasn't in place, this is what would happen when we shut everything off. But because that solenoid's on there, we don't get that. It's turned off right now, so it won't activate, but uh, that's typically how it works. I had this thing doing 240 degree steam last night the test we just did right there was only 220 degree steam there but it can easily be set hotter the way you do that is adjust this valve right here by turning it on or off at a 90 degree angle is off and going with the pipe is on you want to keep the pressure below 250 psi there so just by watching the steam output and adjusting this knob, you're not gonna wanna adjust this knob here. I've got it set right where it needs to be. But in the event it were to get moved and shipping or something, you start off by closing this valve all the way, open this valve all the way, and you slowly close that valve until you develop a pressure loop inside of here, a static pressure of about 250 PSI's. You then crack this valve open a little bit until a small amount of water, about that much comes out of the machine and uh, from there you would close this valve a little more to bring the pressure back up because opening this valve is going to drop the pressure so to increase it you close this one a little bit more and all this valve does is let the water circulate from the discharge right back into the intake so the less we allow to go into the intake the more is forced to go out this side. And we can kind of bottle pressure at any pressure we want by dancing these valves. I can go from like 30 PSI's up to 1500 with no problem. It, it's got a very broad spectrum of operation. It works good for oil pumps as well. Now I would put a cup under that and test the flow rate, but the reality of the matter is we're no longer showing 250 psi so i can't validate that's the actual flow rate but and time i highly doubt this is the flow rate but it might be this thing's been known to boil about a liter a minute so there's the math and we can clearly see that ain't right there's no way we're boiling 32.7 liters per hour 
So we would have to do that by the condensation method where we take the steam line, shove it into an ice bath that's sitting on a scale and weigh the increased weight of that ice bath. So have to get back to you on that actual consumption rate. Now as far as maintenance goes, there's a lot going on with stainless steel in a system like this. If you can somehow use distilled water, that is ideal. In your case, you're saying you're going to be using a water softener. I also suggest trying to get a reverse osmosis filter. The flow rates of those are very low, but also the flow rate of this device is quite low as well. So you might be able to find a reverse osmosis filter system with the flow rate compatible with the one liter per minute this thing's going to boil. Um, as far as passivation and all of that stuff, you are going to want to run some descaler through this coil on occasion to clear it out because it will get build up inside of it if you run it on very hot steam and also on your ductwork system if the holes are too small on your distribution manifold the adiabatic expansion will cause steam to condense back into water so try to avoid very small pinhole type discharge vents on your manifold